down. Speed my rants and gems. Speed my rants and gems. Y'all can do it, we discover. Peace to all the kings and the queens where the mother lie. Speed my rants and gems. Speed my rants and gems. Y'all can do it, we discover. Peace to all the kings and the queens where the mother lie. All right, so we're back with another episode of Rants and Gems Real Estate Podcast. My name is Matt Garland, NMLS number 58700, better known as MG the Mortgage Guy. And my name is Kiana Watson, broker extraordinaire. Extraordinaire. <laughs> License number 317576. And today we have a special guest. We have my personal attorney, <laughs> Sabine Franco. How are you, Sabine? I am good, Matt. Thank you for having me. Well, welcome to Rants and Gems. You're looking... Thank you. As elegant as usual, <laughs> you know. I'm loving Thank the drip so today. I mean, you know? it's a silky this situation. Is it is a this definitely is a silky <laughs> situation. <laughs> a silky situation. You, Listen, you're looking real I coming, silky. I was coming to see this lady over there <laughs> who plays no games. I was like, no, we got to pull out all the stops. You look amazing. <laughs> look, you look amazing. You Thank pulled you out the stops. So introduce yourself real quick for the audience, for the folks who don't know who you are. Sure. So I'm Sabine Franco. I'm an attorney. I'm also known as Sabine the Purpose Lawyer. And my firm focuses on asset protection. So we help create businesses, protect properties, and plan legacies. And I practice out of New York uh -huh. <laughs> with yes. MG, right? Yes, yes. I've um, been practicing for about eight years. And, you know, all the things that I love, estate planning, real estate, mm -hmm. all those things to help people just, you know, continue the generational wealth that we're always talking about. I love it. Mm -hmm. yes. So when did you fall in love with real estate, Sabine? Ooh, when did I fall in love with real because estate? Because you love real estate. <laughs> you got to love it. <laughs> That's a loaded. <laughs> That's loaded. Um, so I fell in love with real estate back when I was 18. I actually was working at a mortgage company. Okay. And um, I, I saw this, this top, he was a top producer. He was a, a, a agent. He was a top producer. And his team just got, like, all the buzz. They were making, like, millions of dollars, essentially, back in Manhattan and New York. Ooh. And when I saw that, I was like, there's something to this real estate. <laughs> there's mm -hmm. something to this real estate. So that's how I, you know, sort of pursued my career in real estate, pursued moving up in um, the mortgage industry, and then eventually going to law school to become an attorney to practice real estate. Dope. Mm -hmm. Dope. I love it. I love it. So today's conversation is going to be a little bit different than the conversations we had on Rants and Gems. Mm -hmm. Today we're gonna to talk about generational wealth, right? And right. the keys to generational wealth. And most people, you know, you hear online, oh, generational wealth, do this, do this, do that. But most people don't even have the right tools in place mm -hmm. to properly build the generational wealth, and that's with right. estate planning. Right. Um, so before we get to, you know, trust and wills and estates and things like that, mm -hmm. let's talk about, because our previous episode we were talking about closing costs, we okay. were talking about title vesting, okay. things of that nature. So let's have a conversation about vesting your title. Like, what are the different ways? Because this is important. Um, part of mm -hmm. the process is when you're buying, a, buying real estate, whether right. it's a primary investment property, the way you, you vest your deed. Mm -hmm. So let's speak from a, a, a home buyer who's going to use right. from their primary residence. Mm -hmm. What are the ways that they can vest their title? Okay, so there, there, like you said, there are several ways. One way, if the person is just, you know, a single person, solo, buying a home, they're just going to buy the title. It's just going to be in their name, right? Mm -hmm. There's no particular type of vesting. It's just them owning it solely, right, okay. and fully. Mm -hmm. Now, if they're joint buyers, there are a couple of ways that they can do that. So one would be joint tenants with rights of survivorship, right? Okay. And so what happens joint tenants with, with rights. rights of survivorship. Correct. Joint okay. tenants with rights of survivorship. And that's really important because when you're owning property as joint tenants with right of survivorship, when one person passes away, the other person automatically takes ownership of that property solely 100%, mm. right? So if you're not intending for your co-borrower to own your portion of the property when you pass away, then you really shouldn't be owning property as joint tenants with right of survivorship. Mm. But it is a good tool, right? It's a good tool to, to bypass what we call probate, which we'll probably get into later on, mm -hmm. but because it just allows you to sort of have an estate plan in place if you did want your co-owner to just get that property. They don't have to do nothing. They don't have to go to court. They don't need to refile that deed. All they need is you know, their ownership plus your death certificate, and they could do whatever they want with that property at that point. So what if the person who passed away, God forbid, right? Mm -hmm. What if they have children? Mm -hmm. 
what and <laughs> what if they have children and now what happens to their heirs? Right? Do they have Wait. any ownership? <laughs> Wait a minute, I see what he's trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm going there. So yeah, th- like I see where we're headed. Right. Yeah, we right. definitely want to know that. So I'm married, mm-hmm. this is my man. Right. You know, but we have children too. Mm-hmm. But I pass away mm-hmm. and now it's it goes directly to him. Mm-hmm. If I don't have what do we need to have in place to make sure it's equally allocated? Right. So if you're married and your spouse is not the parent of your child then you probably don't want to own property as joint tenants with that person, right? Because okay. they're going to get 100% of that property, all of the rights in that property, and your children essentially will be left out of that, mm-hmm. right? And it will be left up left up to that spouse to decide to then leave your children something, right, if they wanted to. So you would need to have some other planning vehicle in place with that other person, you know, with your spouse, to be able to make sure that that asset goes to your children, so a part of it mm-hmm. goes to your children. So another thing, another way to vest real estate, which we, we have started to talk about, is as tenants in common, okay. which you could do. Um, you could you could have title as tenants in common, so that when one person passes away, the interest of each goes to their heir. Right? Tenants in common. Tenants in common. So okay. that's the way to do that if you want. One thing to, to point out there is that you cannot disinherit your spouse totally. <laughs> okay, okay. Talk to us again. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot disinherit. So what that means is, say you're like, okay, because I get older people who they've gotten separated and they don't speak to their spouse and they're like, I don't want so-and-so to get anything. And I'm like, well, you can't really do that because your spouse is entitled in most states to at least 30% of your estate. Really? Really. Yes. And so if you decide that you're going to plan and you're going to leave nothing to your spouse, what they can do is they can go to court and say, hey, I have this right. It's called an elective share, and I'm supposed to get 30% or whatever it is in what your is an, uh, Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> what is an elective share? An elective share is what a spouse is entitled to when someone pass, when their spouse passes away, right? Okay. So the surviving spouse is entitled to their elective share, and they're entitled to get a portion of that person's estate when mm. they pass. Right. So you can try to do it. And if the spouse doesn't know or doesn't care, they don't have to exercise that. But by law, they're entitled to it. Wow. Yeah, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. So there's like no override on that. Mm -mm. Mm. There is no override. (laughs) People get elective share. Yes. Yes. Cheers to elective (laughs) share. Cheers. Elective shares in the house. Elective shares. You like that that one. (laughs) I think we both like it. I see you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. man. I'm not getting away with it. Tried, <laughs> not not, get, not getting, getting away, away with it, it huh? No, no. Elective <laughs> shares. This is interesting. <laughs> this is interesting, right? Because when people buy homes, you're not thinking of this. Right. No one talks about this. Mm-mm. Like, why do you think people are not talking about this? Um, I think that you... Because this is important stuff here. <laughs> it is. It's very important. And people don't realize how important it is. I think it's just because we're not educated on it. You know what I mean? Like, it's just not something that's been, you know, talked about in our communities. And people think that they're that they can just take things into their own hand in terms of passing on their property. Like, for instance, I had a young man, and I always remember him. He called me. He's like 20 years old. And he's like, you know, my mom left me, my, left me her house. She passed away. She left me her house. She intended for me to have it, but it's in my uncle's name. Mm. So mom deeded the property to uncle thinking that that's going to be, he's going to be able to take care of the son or then pass it on to the son somehow, some way. But no, that is now the uncle's property, Uh, right? And so now the uncle's like, well, I want some money to give you this property type of thing. You know what I'm saying? And it happens. You never, when you pass away, you don't know what people are going to do. Like people change up, (laughs) you know, when money comes into play, like people change up quick, like Kids lose their minds, like they're fighting, they're arguing. And so when you plan, you can avoid this type of situation. Good to know. Mm-hmm. So what are the what are the ways, all right, because you said two ways right now. You said tenants in common. Mm-hmm. And what was the tenants? Joint, with, joint, joint tenants, tenants with rights of survivorship. Yeah, right of survivorship. Mm-hmm. Um, now, obviously, those are if you have co-borrowers or if you're adding people onto your deed Correct. in a later standpoint. What are other ways you can vest your title? Are those really the main two common those, ones? Yeah, those are really the main two common ones. The other one is... Um, uh, it's it's called uh, I forget the exact legal term, but it's where husband and husband and wife are married, you mm-hmm. know, 
they, they each automatically get uh, the share of the others unless you say something otherwise, right? So it's just like joint tenants with rights of survivorship. It's pretty much the same, except the only other element is marriage. So if you don't say, like I said, where you can put it as tenants in common and then have the share right. separated, if you don't say that, it's automatically going to go tenants by the entirety. That's what it is. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Tenants by the entirety. I think I need yeah. to take that note. Yeah. Tenants <laughs> by the entirety. Yeah, the entirety. That means we don't have no questions. Everything just comes to me mm -hmm. as the wife. Yes. And then I can divvy it out as I see fit. As you see fit, correct. <laughs> this is, this, you you in the audience right now? <laughs> like what's happening here? Listen, I'm taking notes just so we can be clear. And it's not it's just so you can have you know, it's yes. like you build this life together mm -hmm. and you just want to make sure you can divvy it out as you see fit. You may see fit to divvy it all out. Yeah, you're right. Or you may be see fit to hold on to it. <laughs> I'm just saying. Right, right. So at least we know like the common terms, mm -hmm. right? When they're looking to buy a property and now like this is these are the things that can happen. Right. But what if we always hear, what if I have a will? Mm -hmm. So what if I have a will and say, no, this is exactly what I want. Would a will trump this or does mm -hmm. this trump a will? That's Good a question. question. Good question. <laughs> That's a wonderful question. So actually a will does not trump the way that you leave your vesting on your title. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. this is why I'm glad we're having this conversation yes. Yes. because when you're buying a house, people, when you're right. buying a house, make sure you understand vesting, especially if you're buying it with a boyfriend, girlfriend, Correct. parents, the boyfriend. you know, mm -hmm. especially your boyfriend and girlfriend, fellas, I'm, you buying with your, with your woman, make sure you got your <laughs> ish together, brothers. Exactly. Like you know what's going on here exactly. because yeah. it's very important. I see so many times people are buying homes and they're not married. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, and they don't know what the hell is going on. They're just right. happy to be a homeowner. Right, but right. they break up, and they want to actually keep everybody in the same loop. Right. And that's yeah. the hardest thing. So they're thinking, well, we're together. You know, eventually we're gonna do something big. So I'm gonna, you know, you buy this house, mm -hmm. so you can keep this debt. I put myself on your on the deed, mm -hmm. and then you buy this house, so we can keep this debt, and you put yourself on this deed. Right. But we, you know, we're not married, but we have a plan. Yeah. We have we have yeah. an investing plan, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but right. let's just say that that dissolves. Mm -hmm. Even if someone remarries and say this is what I want, and they put it in the will, it does not trump. It does not trump. Wow. So if they never change that deed, like say it was jointly, and they never change that deed to say something otherwise, it's going to bypass what we call probate. And a will is a document that brings you into court, yes. and that's the probate process. So now that that deed that you have is not is never going there. So it's automatically going to that person mm. by operation of law is what it's called. Damn. Yeah. So your will <laughs> means nothing, basically. Well, in that case. In that case. In that case. When we're talking yes. real estate mm -hmm. and, okay. and how your your deed is vested. Yeah. So now if it's tenants, um, if it's tenants in common where each each um, owner's share goes to their heirs, then that share would pass through your will, right? So your will could then say, what would you like to happen with that share? But if it's just joint tenants with right of survivorship, it's not going to. Right. Mm -hmm. Man, that's yeah. incredible. <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, okay. I learned something every time I Me speak too. to you. There you go. Like, because I did not, I always thought your will is your will oh. and these are your wishes and this is, it is what it is. And right. I thought that too. I thought that if I can say, well, you know, I want this percentage to go to this person, that percentage to go to that person, that is what a will is for. Mm -hmm. So to know that this trumps everything. Right. What advice would you give a person, especially, you know, let's, let's, let's talk to first, let's talk to unmarried people mm -hmm. that are planning to build an un empire together because it's happening more and more. Mm -hmm. We're like, listen, we're going to use your job and your income to buy this house mm -hmm. as investment one. I put myself on the deed. Then your job and my income is investment two. You put yourself on the deed. Mm -hmm. What recourse do you see from that? And do you feel like that's a smart move? I mean, it's not a terrible move, except that you just have to have everything in writing and you have to have everything titled properly. So you want to make sure if you're buying property with someone and you're not married to that person, and this is just like, you know, a friendship for all intents and purposes, right? So you want to make sure that your Ooh. deeds are... She said, if you had, she, said, she said, if you're not married, you're just friends. You're just friends. <laughs> oh, the law geez. says, right? The law says you're single. So, yes, the law says you're single. So you want to make sure that title is 
tenants in common. And yes, you want to make sure that you have some planning document in place. A will is one type of planning documents. We could get into trust as well. But a will is the minimum thing that you want to have because then if you have those separate shares, now when you receive your share, you know, if you pass away and your family receive your share, what's going to happen with that share? And your will is going to be the document to say, this is what I want to happen with that share, sort of how you just described. Got it. Mm -hmm. Damn, y'all. This is a powerful conversation <laughs> right now. Yeah. And I should say that a, um, with a, a deed is not the only thing that has that feature where it bypasses probate. So okay. you have your retirement accounts. You know how you have a beneficiary to ask you who's the beneficiary? Absolutely. That bypasses probate. So if, you're, if, the doc, if the information on your retirement accounts is wrong, then guess what? It's going to pass wrong, right? So what oh. happens is... People get married or get into relationships, they put somebody as their beneficiary, they break up, they forget, and then they never change it. Because when do you do that? When you first start a job or when you first open Correct. the account, That's right? They never change it, and then they pass away, and then the person, your ex, now gets all of the benefits, not your family. And not there's nothing family. that's in your your tools, your wills and stuff like that, <laughs> right? Like, what? Your, 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 tools. your tools doesn't protect you. This is from getting that? real serious so, for Matt. This is why <laughs> this is this is why I've been on my soapbox, Matt. Okay. Right? To tell people like you might want to, depending on the amount of assets you have, you might want to think about at least having a trust, right? So if you have over a hundred thousand, especially if you have real estate, mm -hmm. you might want to think about having a trust. Why? Because now you can make your trust the beneficiary of all of these assets: your retirement accounts, your life insurance, and your trust is now going to say how you want these assets to be passed down and you could yeah. wait a minute <laughs> Slow down. Because you're, 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 sorry, you're going sorry. too fast you just told us i couldn't do anything with the wheel yeah but what you're saying is create a trust and have everything i own go to the trust right so then i can tell the trust what to do right so i don't want to say you can't do anything with the will you can right but it's a it's sort of like the minimum planning document right okay. that you should have and the reason why the will is not a fan favorite is because you still got to go to court, right? Mm -hmm. The will has to be filed in court. It becomes public information. Anybody could go down to the courthouse mm -hmm. in whatever county and find out all what you had, Kiana, and who you left it to, right. and <laughs> all what they now just inherited, right? <laughs> they now know what MG's children is. Talk about oh, life man. after death. Right. right. Yeah. So you don't, you don't necessarily want that. Right? You don't necessarily want this long probate process where your family now has to go to court, has to spend money, hire lawyers. Like I said at InvestFest, we make more money if you have to come to us with a will and we have to take that to court and now get the court to give up all your assets, right? Mm. So now if you don't have a lot of assets, then you should at least have a will, right? But the better planning tool is a trust. And that's why I brought that up because now you can put somebody in place who's called your trustee and that person is your trusted person who you know is good with money or is responsible and is now when you pass away <laughs> is going to now be able to walk out those directives that you gave you okay. know what i'm saying mm. so yeah wow so yeah. now that we've touched on that yeah we know a will is the starter point mm -hmm. so like a will is like hey you guys i'm in the i'm in i'm, I'm in jv but but the trust is we're in varsity. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're in varsity. That's okay, right. so yeah. let's just talk let's talk about what a what an actual trust is. Okay. So basically, you know, now that we know that a will, you know, I'm J V. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm junior varsity, I got a will. Right. But now when I get up in the league and I'm varsity, yes. I'm a starter. Yes. I need to get a trust. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to us what a trust is? Yeah, sure. So a trust, really what it is, is really just a piece of paper, right? It's a document, but it's a document with a lot of details. So everything that you can do as an individual, you have to give your trust the right to do those things. So we're talking about you could go to the bank, you could file taxes, you can invest, you can, you know what I'm saying? You can do all these things. And also you have to give it directions on how do you want um, your wishes to be walked out? Like when my ch children turn, 21, I want them to be able to buy a car, maybe. I want them to, you know, <laughs> go to school or take vacations or what have you. I want them to have financial literacy. Like, you get to leave all these rules and directions that you would not be here to implement. Wow. Yeah. And so you put somebody in place called your trustee. So somebody who you trust, who is responsible, and who can handle these type of responsibilities to be able to walk out your wishes in the trust. 
And the trust is a legal, um, it's a legal sort of like, I don't want to say like institution, it's like a legal thing where, um, similar to how a business entity is. You know how a business entity yeah, lives outside of you. So is it like, let's just like, like an LLC, we make up a name. Mm -hmm. So a trust, does it have to be a whole nother name or is it just, this is my trust? This is yeah. Kiana Watson's trust. Yeah, you, you're definitely going to name it, right? Okay. I don't typically recommend that you name it your full name just you know, because in your business, there you go. <laughs> she learns quick. You know what I mean? Listen, Correct. I, Correct. I told you I'm taking notes. Yeah, that I'm is just, right. I, I'm publicly private anyway. I don't want nobody in my business. Publicly, publicly private. private. <laughs> so when, mm. if something goes down, you want a trust that's an ambiguous name. Yes. And the trust is going to say, listen, I want that dollars to go here. Mm -hmm. When that person turns 21, they can get $15. Yeah, exactly. And that's how we go. Exactly. Uh -huh. I like that. Exactly. That's what are the exactly. different kind of trusts that's available? Sure, that's a great question too, Matt. So there's the overarching different types of trust is a revocable trust and an irrevocable trust. So mm -hmm. there's lots of different trusts, but they're What's all the difference gonna, between the two? Sure, yeah. They're all going to fall into at least one of those categories. So a revocable trust, when you're somebody who's young, you're still building your wealth and you're doing um, you know, different types of investments and you're moving money and moving assets, you're probably going to want a revocable trust because it's something that you can change. It's very fluid. Mm -hmm. um, it's still owned by you. It's still governed by your social security number, but it's you, you can make changes to it, right? You can decide, I want to put these assets in here. I want to give it to my cousin. Oh, no, she's acting up. I want to take it back. I don't want to make her the beneficiary anymore. You know, what have you. You can make all those different types of changes. Now, with the irrevocable trust, it's the type of trust that you want to now tuck assets away that you probably don't need access to, mm -hmm. right? It's, in, it's a type of trust that you cannot change, and you also are not um, in control of it. So with the revocable trust, you are in control of it. Who's in control of the other? <laughs> so, you are. Yeah, so so the revocable trust, you're going to be the trustee during your lifetime. Yeah. You're in control, yeah. right? But the irrevocable trust, you're going to name somebody to be in charge of that trust. And the reason why the law requires you to do that is because you can't have your cake and eat it too, right? You can't take this asset out of your name. Um, it lowers your tax liability, <laughs> right? And still have, you know, be able to have access to all of the assets within that trust. So you name someone as a trustee, you have a beneficiary, somebody who's going to benefit from those assets eventually when you're not here. Um, the reason why people do that, they'll put like a legacy property that's going to stay in the family forever and they're not looking to sell or what have you. Or if they are in a position where their assets are starting to creep up above the taxable limit, we'll just say, right, for mm -hmm. now. The assets are starting to creep up, and they want to keep that low because they don't want to be taxed by the IRS if they die, right? Mm -hmm. So if there are some assets that they can move outside of their um, outside of their estate, then they tuck that into the irrevocable trust. <laughs> you just said something very intriguing. Mm -hmm. So if there is an asset and you don't want it to be taxed mm -hmm. by the IRS, mm -hmm. you can put it in the trust. Yes. But it's the revocable trust. Irrevocable, irrevocable trust. trust. The yeah. one that you can't touch mm -hmm. and someone else is in charge of. What's right. the limit? How much an assets can you put in here that'll be tax free basically? Okay, so let me let me As sort of, of break today. that down a little bit. Yeah, because yeah, we need to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when when someone passes away, there's something that's called a death tax, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. And so everyone gets taxed forty percent of what they own when they pass. Right? That's what the law your says. Your heirs. Your, your estate before it gets to your heirs, okay. right? But there's always a credit or, or an exemption, right? And I think Ms. Business talked about this a little bit when she was here. So the exemption is that if you, may, if you have less than $11.7 million on the federal level, if you die with less than that, you don't pay any taxes on that. So Trump instituted that. Um, before that, it was at $3 million, I'm sorry, it was at $5 million. When he came into office, he raised it to 11.7. So now it's 11.7 for now on federal. Some states have state tax. Um, some states don't, right? So New York has um, a, a state tax at 5.7 million. So if you're at the 5.7 million or the 11.7, say you're in New York, right? If you're at the 5.7 million and you have more assets than that number, mm -hmm. now you're like, okay, whatever I have above that number is going to get taxed at 40%. So if I want to keep that number low, I could put some in an irrevocable trust so that if I pass, they don't tax that at 40%. Does so if I, have, if I have $20 million in assets, mm -hmm. essentially, mm -hmm. I can have two trusts going. 
I could have a revocable and an irrevocable Correct. trust, and I could put ten million in each. Correct. Basically. Yes. <laughs> and then, if God forbid something happens to me, my family is good, except for if I live in the state of New York, because I'm gonna get taxed on both of them because it's above you, five point seven million. Right. You'll get taxed on that portion above the five point seven. The difference, million. basically. Right, so, right. like, what's that? Almost four million dollars. I'm gonna get taxed. My my estate. Yes. Will get taxed on on both of my trusts. Wow. Because no. it's a, only on one of them. The only on one of them. Interesting. Because the one that's in the irrevocable trust is not even in your estate. It's not even um, owned by you, right? So oh. that that is one of the tools and strategies that we use for people who have high net worth, right? And there, there are other tools, and people should, what I try to educate people on is to keep track of what your estate is, what your right. assets are, so that we can do and make these maneuvers when it's needed for you. Now, sometimes people are just starting out and they're like, well, I want to not pay any taxes and I want to figure out what are all these strategies, but it may not be relevant for you until, you know, you're it faced is. with these type of things and different different strokes for different folks, right? Because your assets are going to be made up of different things. So, hmm, let me ask hack. you. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a, that's a, a hack. hack. <laughs> that's like a that hack, for real. And, it, and it's great to kind of just have a pass through so that way things can easily get to turned over when you pass mm -hmm. to wh whomever you choose right. in the order that you choose it. Yes. Because we see all these things, especially on television, um, when they're 21, they can get a car. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to give them $5,000 every year until they're 30, and then at 30, they can get $2 million. Yes. Yeah. Like, those are the things that you see in trust. Mm -hmm. But that's not a will. Exactly. That's not a will. Because when you leave it in a will, once you pass away, then the courts eventually are going to distribute those assets. Right. So now whoever you left your assets to, they're going to get it all that money they want. And even with like a life insurance policy, when you leave that to someone, they're going to get all that money at one shot. Like the life insurance policy, they're not trying to like, oh, wait, we got to wait till you know yeah. she graduates college or something. No. So that's why you would leave that to a trust. Life insurance is wonderful and we all need so it. So make your life insurance the, the beneficiary yeah. of the trust. trust. Absolutely. OK. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So let's talk now. Yeah. <laughs> now we know we all need a trust. Yes. Yana needs a trust, mm -hmm. an ambiguous name. <laughs> yeah. And um, when, you, when you're looking to get a trust, so how, how is that process? Okay, now I feel like I'm at a point, mm -hmm. I have enough assets that I want to create a trust. What, mm -hmm. are, what are three easy steps that I'm going to, to need to mm -hmm. get my trust started okay. and start move, maneuvering all my assets in the name of the trust? I love that. So. The first thing that you're going to do is that you're going to gather all of your assets. So you can create a spreadsheet. Like what I do is I give my clients a spreadsheet, right? And so what they'll do is they'll write down all of the bank accounts that they have and how much it is and what institution it's with. Um, all of the investment accounts that they have, same thing, how much, what institution, all of your real estate <laughs> that you have, you know, all of this information gathering of what your assets are. Because most people, if you pass, they don't know. Like, like you said, you're publicly private, so who's going <laughs> to know what you have? No right. one, right? right? So the first step would be to gather all of that information. The next step is to find you a good attorney in your area, right, where you're located, who's licensed in your state, and then have a conversation with them. The next thing to do is to make sure that you're paying attention to what the attorney, the conversation that you're having. They should be discovering as much about you as possible because this is not a one size fits all type of thing. Like, you know, we use similar tools and, you know, things like that, but it's not a one size fits all. And depending on where you are in your life, in your journey, what your goals are, we, that has to be tailored for you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So those are the three steps. You're going to gather your assets. You're going to... Um, find you an attorney and then you're going to pay attention to what questions are being asked and make sure that something that it's being tailored to you, your life and your goals. Great three steps. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. If I have a trust, why do I need a will? So a will now um, is a nice companion to a trust because <laughs> okay. your trust needs to own all of your assets in order to be in control of it, Correct. right? Or whatever asset you want it to control, it needs to own it. If it doesn't own it, then it has no authority over it, right? Uh -huh. So you're moving and shaking in your life, right? You're you know acquiring things. There may be instances where you haven't yet transferred it to your trust. And so the will now is sort of like a safety net in that case because now, okay, worst case scenario, we have to go to court, but at least we know what to do with this asset that did not make it to the trust. So that's basically if you got your trust, mm -hmm. everything is finalized, right. but you keep getting money, you're doing what you got to do, you're building up your net worth mm -hmm. and your assets, 
but you don't update your trust on an annual basis, right? right? And God yeah. forbid something happens to you. Exactly. So now the will is there to kind of like be like the, the safety net, basically, mm -hmm. to make sure that, okay, we still have this. It's not going to just go to some probate or just exactly. wander in, in, <laughs> in the states. Yeah, you know we don't I mean? we don't need the court to figure out what to yeah, do with we, this. We know what we it know is what already. To do so with we this. have the will in place to catch whatever the trust did, and God yeah. forbid something happens, and you're not proactively right. updating. Exactly, basically. exactly, and that's called a pour over will. A pour over will. Yeah, so it's pouring whatever you didn't have. In your in your trust, I like your that. Trust. A yes. pour over will. <laughs> Just kind of pour everything back. Yes. Put it back. I didn't have time. <laughs> <laughs> Your assistant. Put it back. I didn't have the, time. The will is like the assistant, yes, basically. Yes, yes, I love yes. that. Okay, so how much is all this going to cost us today? Because exactly. you're talking a lot of ish right now. Right? I really was just going to say that. So if I if I want to, because most people they mm -hmm. oh it's going to cost so much. I want to establish a will. I want to establish a trust. What is the easiest way to do so? Mm -hmm. What is the estimated cost? Okay, so. Keep in mind, if you have a ton of assets, your estate plan. You see, is going you to see when it's going to be expensive, right? <laughs> you see when, it, when it's going to be. <laughs> Let me break this when, down. Well, you got to keep in mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you know, every state is different. Every attorney is different. So, I would say on the low end, you're probably looking at two thousand dollars. That's probably not a plan that's going to give you a trust, right? Okay. But it's something that you could build on. On the high end, it could be as much as fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. Now you're talking about somebody who has tons of assets. We got to use a lot of different tools and strategies mm -hmm. to sort of make sure that things are um, are, are covered. You, on average, you're probably looking around the four or five range, okay. you know, for for a comprehensive plan. And so that's why you like fill out the spreadsheet first, and I'll determine what the cost is going to be. <laughs> based off of based <laughs> off of based off of everything you have. Sort there. of like I st my clients still pick sort of what they want to pay in a sense because we have different plans and I okay. say if this is what you're looking for based on what we've just gone through this is where you'll fall they still get to decide like I have people sometimes say you know what I want to just start with a will because I want to get something in place and I'm like wonderful right we do a will we do a health care proxy of power of attorney those are sort of do those are documents that allow people if you're alive but you're not able to make decisions for yourself to step in and do that for you, like run your business, you know, um, make healthcare decisions. Like, how does this? Who, how do I want to be treated if I'm not well? This is so. <laughs> those say, this is things. so great information because we never think about the what if. Mm -hmm. Like we're so busy running around and you know we're running all these businesses. Everybody's doing great yeah. and nobody thinks. Well, what if? Like, mm -hmm. what if something happens? What if? you need to depend on someone to think for you or log into your business accounts and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, even when you're doing this and you're doing this estate planning, let's say you own four different businesses, you mm -hmm. can take all those businesses and put them under one trust. Absolutely. So that would be the biggest benefit. Mm -hmm. That would be That's the biggest amazing. benefit because now your trustee can step in and make payroll, you know, or like, yeah. you know, do move and shake, do all the things that you need to do to keep your businesses running or tap someone on the shoulder who needs to step in, you know, because it's just like a lot of businesses fail because somebody got sick, right? Many well, small businesses fail because somebody got sick just because no one could be there to like connect the dots. And that's like sort of the last thing you want to do because your business is probably one of the big one of the biggest assets other than real estate that you're going to pass on, right? Like if they if your family can continue to run it. Why do you think <laughs> banks, real estate associations, you know, mortgage banking associations why do you think they don't make this mandatory that everyone who purchases a home should have a will <laughs> at closing? Like, shouldn't this be a part of your closing costs? It right. should. Like, shouldn't this, like, be, like, automatic? Like, yo, you're buying a house, mm -hmm. protect yourself. Like, here's a, a, a pick your attorney. Right. Like, this should be part of the process, in yeah. my opinion. I agree. Because, like you said, what if? Like, no one thinks of the what if, and we've all been in the business for years now. Mm -hmm. We've all heard stories and known clients that purchased homes and then they died immediately, mm. right? Yeah. I've had so many clients that's that happened really? to, wow. so many clients that's happened to where a spouse died, someone died within 12 months after they purchased a home or wow. two years, you know, and they didn't have nothing in place. Mm -hmm. So why do you think that this conversation is not happening more within the real estate 
community. Realtors, loan officers, yeah. you know, why is this not why is this not a conversation yeah. thing that's happening on a regular basis? One thing that I think is is true and, and I don't know I don't think it's not happening for all communities. I think for certain communities it's not you know, it's huh. not a conversation. We already know what communities that's that's <laughs> not a conversation. You know, I'm gonna it's sip not, a little wine. I'm, I'm look, sip we, a little look, wine we on this we, one. We already know. We it's not, already it's, know. It's we not know. happening in our communities. It's it's not it, okay, we can speak for it. We're we're we are all African American on this channel. I think yeah. that it's not happening in the black community enough. Why? Because um, when because one real estate is power, wealth is power, right? How has um, our counterparts been able to build wealth and scale for many years that we were not even able to own real estate? Right? Mm -hmm. We're not even able to own real estate. So now, passing on that wealth empowers the next generation. Passing on that wealth doesn't leave us at zero in 2053. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it's not a, you know, a conversation because the less people who pass on wealth, the bigger the gap, the wealth gap, right? And it mm -hmm. allows the rich to get richer because what happens? A property's going to foreclosure. Their friends at the courthouse is letting them know that there's this property that, you know, somebody died and it just, you know, went into foreclosure and now, you know, they're getting the deals. Mm -hmm. And so that's why this conversation is not happening when you get a home, protect your assets, make sure it gets to the next generation. No, they don't want that. You know what? What you just said, and you said it really quickly, but that's mm -hmm. really important. Mm -hmm. You get a home, you have to protect the asset, mm -hmm. and that's the vehicle that gets it to the next generation. Absolutely. What's missing is the middle. Yeah. We get, we're getting the home, yeah. mm -hmm. and we just think, I got the home now, I'm building generational wealth. Mm -hmm. But if you don't protect it, then you're not. Right. Because you don't, you're not getting it to that next level. Exactly. So that's they really go hand in hand. So yeah, we need asset you. protection. Mm -hmm. That's what you need. Why the, how do we how do we get this message out to our community? Mm. Like how, like what 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 are the steps that we take as all professionals here mm -hmm. to make this happen? In your opinion, um, you know, sharing it, you know, sharing the information, letting people know that it's not automatic that your assets go to your heirs the way that you in in your mind think that it's going to go. It's not automatic. You have to do something more than. The law is not really there to protect you. It's not really on your side in that in that um, case. So you have to take some steps to actually do something about it. I love it. Yeah. Mm, all right. Taking the steps. And I mean, doing things like the Rants and Gems show and really putting yeah. it out here. I can tell you, I put a lot of things into perspective and I'm looking for, I'm now about <laughs> to, uh, I, I need to set these things up. Yes. You know, we're building a lot of businesses and a lot of assets and, I'm, mm -hmm. and certain things like in my mind, mm -hmm. I'm like, this is how it's going to go. Right. I got an insurance policy, so this is what they tell me to put. So I put this percentage here, this percentage here, this percentage there. Mm -hmm. This percentage here, this percentage here, this percentage there. Mm -hmm. But I never thought, let me put it in another vehicle. But in, in, And that's being quite honest. Mm -hmm. I Even though I hear about it, really having someone break it down mm -hmm. the why, right. you've broken down that why. Oh, and <laughs> um, I'm hoping that not just myself, but right. anyone that's watching this, like, you really start looking at it like it goes hand in hand. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So when you're searching for a real estate broker and you're searching for a mortgage officer, a loan officer, right. you need to also be looking for an asset attorney. Yes. And you need to do all of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should. To, it to, should to pass on the generational wealth. Yeah, it doesn't right. make sense to be working as hard. You know what I'm saying? Making right. all this money, building up all these assets, and then God forbid something happens, and then now the courts are the one deciding yeah. what's really going to happen to your hard work. And then ultimately, you don't even want to leave it to the chance of the people you want to leave it to because they may sit here, they don't respect right. your hard work right. Right. and what you did <laughs> to get there. Now, right. we all heard stories of people getting, getting <laughs> like, grandma's house, mm -hmm. getting this and getting that, I remember that and they idea. blowing everything, yeah. they're selling everything, they're blowing it, yeah. or they wind up being broke a year that later. That literally years happened later. to uh, my aunt and she got this lump sum of money, and mm. she just didn't know what to do with it. Right. I do remember what we did with it. We had hair and bone chains. Yeah. <laughs> we were eating out, I was younger. Yeah. Hair and bone and everything. So, I, so now that I think about it, I see why people are like, you know, I'm gonna give you this little bit of money at mm -hmm. this point, and this money at this point, or if you finish this task, then you'll get this. Yeah, exactly. And um, that is how a trust will protect your assets for Absolutely. your heirs, and for your so family. it's like you know we all watch power right? yeah it's yeah. like power it's, it's when, when ghost died <laughs> yeah and you know he had it, to go to college Tariq had to go to college yep and he got to finish too he can't, he, just, he, go. He can't just go <laughs> he got he got to go to college he has to graduate with a certain gpa yes. mm -hmm. in order to get a little bit 
of the money. Right. And, then, and, then, and then you get that little bit, then you yeah. gotta wait a while and get another bit. Exactly. That's a prime example but you know of how what? trust works. Mm -hmm. But she did but see, she didn't miss Mrs. St. James, James St. Patrick didn't get the elected because she was not able to get it. <laughs> she, she didn't get the, what's she it called? The, the elective share. She didn't get her elective share, but and wait, now we need to talk to the right. That they were, but yeah. the, so that's what I'm saying. She had no elective share. Nothing. She had no right to any money. Mm. Nothing. Mm. That Nothing. is just, see? That was, was sad. That was sad. <laughs> but it's messed it. up, but Put a state, but a state plan. Put your name on the A state plan. That's a the state plan. Yeah. You got yes. a state plan, and, and look, we can't be naive to these things because you can't think, Oh, this person's gonna take care of me. Exactly. You gotta know. You gotta if know. You in some sort of relationship, you're getting money, you gotta know what the hell is really going on. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you could be SOL. Yeah, and sometimes people like they'll say, Oh, I'm gonna leave some money to my mom and my sister because I know they'll take care of my kids. Don't that's their money. They don't yeah. have to take care of your kids. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. it doesn't happen like that the you know, there's no responsibility for them to take care of your kids. Now if you leave it in a trust there is a responsibility. The trustee has to take care of your kids. You know, mm. the finances have to be there for your kids. So it's 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 really important that these things are sort of like paid attention to. You know, hundred percent agree. Oh yeah, you you've enlightened me. You have enlightened me. <laughs> no, I'm, she I'm, did my trust. Listen, <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm sitting here now. I'm like, you know. Do you do you do you practice in the state of Georgia? <laughs> I'm not licensed in Georgia yet, but, but I do you have, have an amazing. I do have an amazing. And, and, and see, this is how you build relationships, mm -hmm. my people. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm and I'm quite. I'm very serious about it because okay. I was doing a different policy. I'm like in this whole thing. I want to keep building all that. Yeah. And I'm putting all these div divvies out, but mm -hmm. let's get let's build a trust and let's really be legit. Yeah. 100%. So yeah, we can't be working as hard just to be just, working. Just as to hard. be working yeah. as hard if yeah. they do whatever they want. Exactly. So. We, we, you can't leave here <laughs> without giving us a rant and a gem about your industry. Okay. All right. So okay. let's just start with the rant because we want to always end on a high point. <laughs> what is a rant about your industry? Um, okay. So people think lawyers are magicians. Right? They okay. Think because, I like how this is started. They think because you, they have a problem that you're going to be able to give them the exact solution that they want. And what we're there to do is to diagnose your situation and give you the best solution that we could give you based upon where you are. So if you sort of mess things up and you come to me with a mess, it's very hard for us to, you know, get you to the place where you want 100%. We're always going to be able to give you a, 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 a solution, right? right? But it may not be 100% what you envisioned in your mind. Mm. So just just remember that when you're walking into an attorney-client relationship. Got it. Mm. <laughs> and it's That's a relationship. A <laughs> she's, like, a she's like, let's be clear, it's a relationship. You don't come tell me what to do. Yeah, we converse. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let's, do, let's, let's do the tango. <laughs> and we figure it out. That's a rant. So <laughs> what's your gem? So um, my gem is that your legacy is much more than just your assets, right? So we talked about here today about, you know, how your children might, you know, get your assets and waste it and spend it or whoever, whomever, whomever you leave it to. But we can start building that legacy now by, you know, teaching them, educating them, you know, finding out if they actually do want your business or your assets. And if they don't, you could put something else in place where somebody can now sell that asset and put it into whatever it is that they are interested in. But this only happens with having conversations, conversations about your hopes, your dreams, like what did you envision for them, you know, how you got to where you are. All those little stories, they do way more than like pointing a finger, right? You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like yeah. letting them into the process of how you got there and that sort of can help them to see the vision going forward and then when they do receive these assets, when they do receive, you know, whatever it is that you're leaving for them, now there's a deeper connection to it. You know what I mean? That's so I think that's something that everybody could do with zero dollars, right? You know, leave these little, um, th these investments into the next generation, whether it be your child or your niece or nephew, whoever it is. That's mine. Man, that, that. That's, that's, a, that's a good gem. <laughs> that's a gem. That's a, that's a, that's a good gem now. Mm -hmm. For the folks who want to reach out to Franco Law Firm, yes, how can how can they find you? Because look, we got to make this a part of our everyday conversation. Yeah. Asset protection is just as important as acquiring assets mm -hmm. and, and, and making money. Right? Right. So how can how can they find you, Sabine? Sure. So um, I'm Sabine, the Purpose Lawyer, on Instagram, on YouTube. Uh, also have a YouTube channel, and you can find me at my law firm is Franco-LawFirm.com. What states can you work in? Uh, New York and New Jersey. New York and New Jersey. But I do have a vast network of estate planning attorneys 
who are amazing. So if you guys want to reach out, and I will certainly connect you with my my circle. I, I love it. it. Yeah. I love it. This was, this was a phenomenal episode, Sabine. Thank, Thank you, you for catching the red eye. <laughs> yes. And coming, and coming down to Wakanda. Yes, <laughs> yes. You know? We appreciate you. <laughs> you yes. know, I had to catch the red guys. eye too to, to come to Wakanda. And film, <laughs> but we definitely appreciate your presence. Thank um, you guys. This was great. Yeah, this was a great episode. The vesting was... part was really interesting, you know? Yes, yeah. Really interesting. <laughs> like, I didn't it, it, really yeah. understand how the two kind of, like, correlate with each other. Right. Like, but that's the most important part in yeah. the beginning step is when you close. Yeah, yeah. How you're vesting your title. And no one's thinking about that. No, it's mm -hmm. like, I bought a house. I'm building generational wealth. It's like, wait a minute. Hold yeah. up. <laughs> Just one second. Let's, let's get Look, something I'm going to challenge there. every real estate agent, every loan officer that's going to watch this to have this conversation with your clients yes. during the pre-approval process, during the process. Make sure before they go to closing, make sure they, they spoken to an attorney mm -hmm. about estate planning because... Especially if you look like us, yes, you have to. This is a challenge. It's this a is challenge. the estate planning challenge. I'm here for the estate planning challenge. Estate planning challenge. Yeah, right? let's do that. The way my mind works, I literally was just saying, you know what? The same way, as soon as you close, you say, okay, now you're going to get this discount on your homestead insurance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look out for this. We should be passing over. And now that you own the property, congratulations. You have to plan for your estate. Yeah, you absolutely. You need to contact this estate. Yeah. This estate and, and this needs to be. You need to do this. This is not. Don't to do. do this on your time. You do this tomorrow. Right. Because yeah. you're right? not building generational wealth if you're not planning your estate. The, because you absolutely. don't know where your wealth is going to go because your estate isn't planned. Absolutely. Absolutely. We. The, the the transactional folks, realtors, loan officers, yeah. I'm challenging you. We need to be having these conversations with our clients, understanding the importance of generational wealth and how to really truly build generational wealth is you need the right tools I agree. Um, in your toolbox to do that. Absolutely. All right, this was great. All right. Yeah, All right. So great. there we ha there we there you have it in my yeah, Rashad yeah. voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this has been another amazing episode, asset protection. Yes. With Sabine Franco. I think that's going to be the title. Too. Thank, that's you what it is. Thank you guys. <laughs> we don't have to add anything extra to it. Yeah. That's, that's enough. That's enough. So look, yeah. like, comment, share, subscribe. Go to Apple. Go to Spotify. If you're on Apple, rate it five stars. Leave a review. Subscribe. Listen to it on audio, folks. That's how we make Ransom Gems the number one real estate podcast in the world. All right? Awesome. So this is Matt Garland, NMLS number 58700, better known as MG the Mortgage Guy. And I am Kiana Watson, broker extraordinaire, mm -hmm. license number 317576. And I just want to say thank you guys for tuning in for another episode of the Rant and Gym Show. Hey, yo. Hey, see? Speed my rants and gems. Speed my rants and gems. Y'all can do it, we discover. Peace to all the kings and the queens where the mother lies. Uh. Be my rants and gems. I'm so NY like MG rocking his Tim's. Uh, or Kiana representing Atlanta. We talking everything that's real estate. Y'all peeping the gram. I'm saying knowledge is power. You peep the weaponry. Steady building better people claiming all the equity. Dropping rants and gems. We got more of those. Flipping real estate daily. It's never foreclosed.